Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of just how to open a data file in JASP and also how to look over the basic descriptive statistics of the variables in your data file. So, uh, JASP can handle a variety of uh, file types. However, in my brief experience with the program, it seems to prefer comma separated values or comma delimited values uh, which can be easily created in Excel so if you create a spreadsheet in Excel and then you can save it as a comma separated values file so for example looking at this file if, but if it wasn't I think it isn't a comma separated values file I go to save as no, no, it, it is, but uh, if it wasn't, you could just go to save as and change it to that file type. And in my, ex again, brief experience with this program, it seems to prefer CSV files more so than other file types. So let's say we want to open that file. First, open the program. And click on this button here. Go to open. And since the file's on my computer, I believe it's in documents. And I will open the comma separated values file. And it's now opened in the program. All right, so there's a few things you'll want to look at uh, to make sure that things are set up properly. Make sure all your variables are there and that they're named properly. You'll also need want to look at the variable types. So if you click on the s image here, you'll see that you have three options. Scale, which is an interval ratio variable, so a more or less continuous variable, ordinal, which is a rank ordered variable, and nominal, which is simply a label. So JAS will do its best to try to figure that out for you, but you will probably want to confirm that uh, as well. So here we see participant variable. It's labeled it as scale, which is fine. I mean, technically, it's probably an ordinal variable, but we're not going to use it in any analyses, so we can just leave that one alone. Uh, this variable in this data set, lib cons, uh, indicates whether or not a participant is liberal or conservative. And that is a nominal variable, so that was correctly identified. But what you'll notice is it has numbers for, uh, let's say, one is conservative and two is liberal. Uh, so, you'd, I mean, you'd want to go back to your original data to verify that that is, in fact, the case. But we might want to have the labels attached to that. So if you want to add value labels to a numerical variable that that is a nominal variable, you click on the name of the variable and where it says value 1. So let's just assume value 1 was conservative. You'd want to type that in there. Where it says value 2, you'd want to type that in there. And then that will put the value labels onto that variable. Now, when it imported this variable gender, it imported the actual words. So we're not going to mess with that. We'll leave it alone. Female and male. And that is, of course, a nominal variable and then ID strength is treated as interval ratio as it should be rational attribution treated as interval ratio as it should be certainty and all of these scale variables in this data set are treated as uh, interval ratio so it did a good job of identifying which variables are interval ratio and which are not so now we have our data imported into JASP. Uh, if 
we do want to make any changes to the data, we could change the actual uh, CSV file and then save it. And that should be reflected um, in the in the data file. So for instance, just, just to demonstrate this, I'm just going to relabel that participant as a bunch of nines go back and we see that it it's as long as you save it it will update it within the data file uh, that you, that you've uh, or s uh, that you are viewing in JASP so so it's working from the CSV file but it's uh, displaying it within JASP so you can see what the uh, data that you're working on look like which is nice to be able to to, to look at the, the data all right so let's say we want to explore the descriptive statistics of our data file. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to one. So we want to explore the descriptive statistics of our data file. Uh, as you may have guessed, we would go to descriptives and then descriptive statistics. Now, JASP doesn't have as many options under descriptive statistics as SPSS does, particularly for graphing. It's kind of limited for graphing, but it does have enough options to give, give you a basic overview of the descriptive statistics of your data. So if you wanted to look at frequency distribution tables, you would click on this button here, and then uh, for frequency distributions, they tend to make most sense for nominal and ordinal variables. So we'll just throw in our two nominal variables, liberal conservative and gender. Right? And we see that some of these descriptives uh, don't make a lot of sense for a um, nominal variable. So we'll skip over over these and we'll look at the frequency di distribution table. We see that there were 76 conservatives, there were 55 liberals, there were 10 people who didn't indicate a political orientation. In total there were 141 respondents. 53.9% were conservative, 39% were liberal, 7% didn't indicate. Uh, if we just want to look, strictly speaking, at the people who gave an indication, 58% were conservative and 40, roughly 42% were liberal. And then for cumulative percentage, that's just kind of adding as you go. So 58% were conservative. And then it, once we add the liberals to it, it becomes 100%. So that's not very useful for this example, but it's there nonetheless. And then we have the same table for, for gender. Tells us number of females, number of males, number of people who didn't report a gender percent in each group, percent of people who gave a response, which is, that's valid percent. And then cumulative percent would just be like adding the percentages as you go along. Uh, so that's a basic frequency distribution table for a nominal or categorical variable. So for graphs, we have some options, not a ton of options, but uh, there are some options within JASP for graphing. Uh, distributions plots are basically histograms. So we can look at histograms for variables. So I'm just going to throw uh, two variables in there just for fun. And we can look at the histograms to get an idea of the distribution. So here we have on, on the the y-axis is the frequency or the count, and the x-axis is the level of the variable. So we can see the distribution for ID strength, and we can see the distribution for, what is that variable? Rational attribution. And if you want to copy or save any output, uh, 
suggest makes it pretty straightforward to do that. back and we can also look at what are called in, in Jasper called correlation plots these are basically scatter plots so I'm going to ask for a scatter plot and we can visualize the relationship between the variables so here's the the scatter plot here where we have ID strength on the y-axis and rational attribution on the x-axis and we can see that there tends to be a s very slight, a very, very slight uh, inverse relationship between these two variables where as ID strength increases, this variable called rational attribution decreases. So we can generate some scatter plots to visualize the relationship between two variables in bivariate space. And we can also look at box plots. And box plots can give us an idea of the distribution of a variable. Uh, let's make sure that we label the outliers. Let's see if the, okay, this variable. So uh, box plots give us a lot of information in a little bit of space. So the top and the bottom of the box tells you, the top tells you the 75th percentile rank in the data. The bottom tells you the 25th percentile rank in the data. The difference between the two is a visualization of the interquartile range in the data. And the black line inside the box is a representation of the 50th percentile rank or the median in the data. Uh, box plots are also used to identify extreme scores. So we can see case number 56 in our data set and case number one and also case number 72 are somewhat extreme scores. So 56 is a very high score on this variable rational attribution and case number one and 72 are rather low scores on this variable. So moving on to you may not be able to see this, but I'm going to open the statistics menu. Now we have a bunch more statistics we can we can look at for our variables. Uh, so let's ask for the interquartile range, uh, the variance, the range the mean, the median, the mode, and we can also get a test of normality while, while we're at it. And so now in our output, the first table, so you'll notice that as we ask for more things, it updates it in the table to the right. We have a table with these two variables that I asked for data for. Uh, one ID strength and the other rational attribution. We have the mean for each. We have the median for each. We have the mode for each. So the average score, the 50th percentile, the most commonly reported score. We have the sample standard deviation for each. We have the interquartile range for each variable. The variance for each variable. A test of the significance, uh, I'm gonna, we haven't covered this yet, obviously, but this will compare the distribution that we've observed to a normal distribution. And both of these, although the histograms indicate they may not be normal, uh, there's, in, in terms of the p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk test, they don't really depart dramatically from norm normality, but we'll, we'll worry about p-values. Uh, for a in another class. The range is basically a difference between the largest and the smallest score, which is the minimum and maximum score, which is given here. So you can very quickly get uh, some basic descriptive statistics in, in this uh, menu. Another thing you may want to do is 
if you want to look at, let's say, descriptives, but separate it by a ordinal variable or by a nominal variable, basically by a categorical variable. So let's say we wanted to look at these descriptives, but we wanted to separate it by, let's say, whether or not a participant said they were liberal or conservative. So we would put that in the split box there. And now you see the tables magically created uh, or split into two different groups, right? Uh, conservative and liberal, and that the, are the statistics, the descriptors for ID strength, and conservative and liberal, the descriptors, descriptors for rational attribution. Also, we can do the same because we have that in the in the split box. We can also get the graphs separately by a categorical variable. So now we can see we have ID strength for conservative and ID strength for liberal separately by a categorical variable. So the graphing options in uh, JASP, they're, you know, they're not as uh, plentiful as they are in SPSS or, or R. But they, they kind of can get the job done if you just want to look at some basic um, graphs to understand the descriptives of your, of your data. And as far as the descriptive statistics are concerned, uh, most of the usual suspects that you would want when you're analyzing the basic descriptives of your data are available in this program. So. Thank you for listening to that brief overview of how to generate descriptive statistics and some basic graphs in JASP. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.